Hey there gamers, welcome back to Banished Souls Cryptic Gaming here, bringing you my favorite ship build. So this is our River Rat, it is a sloop class ship, which is actually a small class. We'll show you why I like this. So this is currently level 6 of 6 upgraded. Uh, you get this outburst perk, which is fantastic. It says your hits have 50% chance of triggering an explosion, uh, which deals 1500 damage with a blast radius of 150 meters. Increases the damage to structures by 40% and explosive damage by 115%. Uh, you also get this ruined explosive damage hits decrease enemy weapons damage by 10%. So when you hit them, it's going to decrease the damage they send back towards you by 10%. So that's pretty awesome. Heavy arsenal, able to equip front weapons, auxiliary weapons, and unlocks rear gun ports, increases damage and repair amounts by 50% on broadside weapons. River Rat perk, which improves your speed, trimming, uh, sorry, your tuning speed while traversing rivers. So when you're in rivers, you're going to get some really nice turning speed out of this thing. You'll get some really impressive speed. It's just fantastic build all the way around. If you're looking for something that's going to maneuver around those uh, islands and stuff, pretty good. But I use it in open seas too. Can be a challenge in storms sometimes, but really not that bad. So base ship rank is a six. Whole health base is 45,000, brace strength 9,000, speed 11 knots, trim speed 14 knots, cargo space is uh, 65,000, and stamina 100. So how did we equip this thing? Well, because it's explosive damage, I wanted to go with a weapon that uses explosive damage, obviously. So what we did here is we went with our fire bombard threes all the way around this is the weapon to choose if you're looking for explosive damage okay so you get explosive 2 as 20 percent of damage as explosive damage in a 35 meter radius that's going to compound with those base stats of the ship itself you're also going to get that burning damage of 10 percent uh says so each shot you're going to do 3656 damage uh 365 of that's going to be fire 731 of that increased is going to be explosion and then of course your base stats coming off of it as well but that's what we went with on those and then of course for our center area we went with the warhammer now there are a lot of guys who are using things like the uh, infernal mall which could work pretty good for you if that's something you want to do uh, me personally I love this warhammer I just to me, it's one of the best auxiliary weapons in game right now. Now, with armor, I wanted something that's going to really play with this ship very well. It's harder to hit these small ships, even for the enemy, especially in PvP. And you put this Buccaneer's Oath on there, you're going to really, really give somebody a hard time, man, in the game. It's just fantastic. So you have a base rating of 1,200 for the armor. Uh, explosives, you're going to have 20% negation, 15% negation on flooding, 20% negation on fire. 20% negation on that piercing as well you get that blood and gold perk destroying a target confers the blood and gold status onto the ship which is going to increase your weapons damage and armor by 25% for 30 seconds and every time you sink a ship that's going to start that 30 second time over again so just fantastic stuff with that now there's a lot of different furniture you can choose uh, because this is a smaller ship I went ahead and put this uh, scrapper station on there it's going to restore 8,000 whole health after a crew attack. And I also went ahead and put this uh, Boseman Call on here. Increase crew attack damage by 10%. The Bombard Montessor, because we're using Bombards, it's going to increase Bombard damage by 10%, increasing damage to structures by another 8%. I increase the repair amount of repair weapons by 5. Don't imagine I'd use any repair weapons, but we'll just have to wait and see. The Fontana Station, this is for your rockets. Increase by 12% uh, against your ships. Uh, if you go against any like major structures, be like those uh, castles and stuff, you're going to get it 12% as well. Then your bombard grinder increases projectile speed of bombards by 15%. Now you can equip that with something else if you prefer. You know, there's a lot of great options out there for the bombard, but I like to get that extra speed to get that shot out there to the enemy. Then, of course, your rocket furnace. I went ahead and put this on there as well. It's going to increase maximum range of rockets by 10%. Uh, those are, in my opinion, some of the better ones you can put on now. Everybody's going to have their own preference to that, obviously. 
Uh, one of the great things about this ship is it just it looks really cool regardless of what cosmetics you want to use. Now we're using the uh, Season 1 cosmetics from that Lapest stuff that we opened up. I always thought it looked pretty cool. So that's kind of what I had planned out for this once I found out we was going to be able to upgrade them. Now I was asked in a recent video, how do we upgrade ships? Where do we go to do that? So what I'm going to do, take you to the area where you're going to upgrade. Now you're going to need to have ship parts and all the all the gear that you're going to need as far as like all the parts but you're coming up here to the builder where you're going to build your ship and there should be an option here that says upgrade ship and when you find what ship you want to upgrade you can see we still got a few here that we didn't upgrade all the way up i like this one here this is uh i think we've got four six on this padawakan I haven't decided if I want to complete this one or not. We could right now, but this is just going to give you an example. So you use like 135, it looks like. Green heart plank, 45, the lacquer, 25, the rubber, 20 of the uh, the worm's breath. Then you need five upgrade parts. Then, of course, your pieces of eight to upgrade those ships. And you're going to have to, each level, take those up one at a time. And you're going to see those base stats really start to come up. It looked like there was some decent... Uh, perks to this but I ended up going with the sloop and I use that sand buck a lot and we'll be going over that build later it's, it's evolved a little bit in this season now since we've got some new furniture so definitely be keeping an eye out for that but that's where you're going to go to upgrade those ships uh, as far as where do you get the the items to upgrade with well you're going to earn via different events and stuff you can earn some items uh, as far as your upgrade parts or you could go over here to Oubliette or Oblite, however you want to pronounce that and you can go to this person here and you can actually buy them now you can only buy one an hour and I believe it's 200 silver essence if I'm not mistaken so one of the things that I've been doing is I come in here and I go down and yes 200 silver essence and I've just been buying what I can when I get on by one an hour. The reason I'm doing that is coming season three. We have a new ship coming out. Now there seems to be some uh, questions about what can you do to help position yourself better for season three. Well, my recommendation is get what you can upgraded. The ships that you're going to use, upgrade them. If you're not going to use the ship, it's not really worth upgrading. That's my opinion on that i know there's a lot of people telling you to upgrade anything and everything that you can if you're not going to use it it's kind of pointless to upgrade it save those upgrades for stuff that you're going to use but green heart plank obviously i think that's going to be a big one that we're going to continue to see a big demand for uh now you can get your green heart plank which would be uh, i seem like there's some here in the course some over here you can pick up and of course this lumber yard you can buy it and then you can raid it and you can blow up all the ships and stuff around the area and pick it up there as well so that's a good place to get your green heart plank unfortunately there's not really an area where you can go and just go buy a bunch of it there are some things you can purchase quite a bit of in the black market uh, my recommendation to you try to keep 800 or i'm sorry 300,000 of the pieces of eight uh, I've been slowly building up my stockpiles again in the warehouse. Really hoping for that warehouse space, man. Let me tell you. When they tell you, say, oh, yeah, we're getting warehouse space. They started announcing that like a month ago with the warehouse space. And I know there's a lot of us that's been, we're getting frustrated. Stop telling us it's coming. And, and, and oh, but it's going to be next week. Oh, but it's going to be next week. Oh, but it's going to be two weeks from now or whatever. But it sounds like it's coming next week, which would be Monday night, Tuesday morning. We should be seeing that warehouse space coming along with all the other promises that they've made. Unless they change it. Okay, so opening the black market, we have. Oh, we're about almost up to a million again. So there's some different things you can do. You can, if you want to, come in here and buy these legacy cash boxes. That's something you can do if you want to. Uh, I, I would not recommend it. But what I would recommend doing first is. Making sure that you have plenty of the specialized materials. We like to shellac casting sand. Um, 
ironwood stuff like that i don't really see a need for grabbing a lot of that the ramey and the abaca you could get that stuff like crazy up at east indies i'm not seeing where you know there's really any big major need for it and a hard a hard demand for it but definitely i would i would recommend that you can get that casting sand that wood tar and your shellac sheet glass stuff like that so what you do is you just come in here okay what we want to do is we want to cycle our inventory because we'll make sure we're sending this to the warehouse and not to my ship and just keep an eye on your eggs you buy a hundred at a time you buy a couple hundred at a time and you can refine this stuff if you want to I'd, I'd advise you to hold off on refining it at least for now the reason I say that is you might need some of it as raw for that new ship that's coming out I don't really know uh, now as far as the legacy cash these are 10,000 a piece So what I want to do is try to have 300,000 going into next season. That puts us at 388,000. So we may go ahead and buy. Buy that many. We're going to end up buying some more, I'm sure. And we got plenty of worm's breath and all that kind of stuff. The Gannet Salt Peter and all. From season one where we spent several million in here already so okay so what you can do is you can start opening all those crates hoping to get some stuff or just set it back and wait for season three which is what i intend to do or at least wait till we start getting some better drop rates i don't know if you've noticed the drop rates for this season have been insanely difficult uh i know we've all been waiting for that to change is it going to change it did in season one toward the end of the season you're going to start seeing a lot of these contracts here as we approach the last couple weeks all your major contracts are going to be up here on the board uh, I think what we're missing now is the Megalostaris which will be coming back eh, next week or the week after but uh, just Run, farm them out with your friends, man. That's my recommendation. Farm that stuff out with your friends. The drop rates right now, just save your chest. The reason I say save your chest, you're not, it's not dropping anything for me and several of the other folks here in our Discord group. Uh, and when I say several other, I mean a bunch of us. We're just not getting the drop rates. So what we've been doing is just saving up all of our chest, waiting for those drop rates to increase. Now, some of that stuff we may open up at the end of this season, toward the end, or we may just save it for season two and wait and see what we get. Uh, or season three and I know it's frustrating makes you want to pull your hair out sometimes but it just is what it is to understand that Ubisoft they react to the folks who put the most feedback in and if you've been on their reddits or anything like that most of the feedback is is it's not that people are complaining that the drop rates are hard it's people are complaining they don't have all the stuff that we have so they're nerfing our drop rates because those folks don't play the game that much now when you come in here and you play these missions you know 300 times and you have 300 chests you open them and you get nothing that tells you that they got their numbers off so my recommendation don't come onto my channel or the other channels that people report to the game and complain about the drop rates okay i mean you can let me know that's fine but you're going to get the most traction by actually going and letting ubisoft know whether it's on their twitter account or x as they call it now or the reddit going to want to go in there and be commenting in there how many chests you're opening what your current drop rate is what sucks about it how it's affecting your game that's where you're going to get those drop rates to start increasing because if all they're hearing is oh everybody's getting all the good stuff and i can't get nothing and they got some guy who's playing maybe an hour a week compared to someone who's on here all week every day 10 hours a day grinding as hard as he can and he can't get any drops at all because they think that you know the game's dropping it too easy that's 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 uh that's what's going on guys so that's my recommendation to you of course your refinery like i said you can come over and you can refine a lot of that stuff uh I, i'm gonna hold off right now on some of that i cannot wait until we get this warehouse space it's going to be great i know a lot of us are just really hoping for that here pretty soon so uh let's take our ship out actually 
Let's see here. Oh, I hit the wrong. I went and hit the wrong button. I went to smugglers then. Here we go. Let's go out and see if we can go pummel a few ships here. Sometimes when I come up here, I tend to get quite a few of those course fleets. But like I said, it's River Rat. I, I've just been loving it. This is this and the Sandbuck has been kind of my go-tos. Uh, now, as we've been progressing into the season, getting deeper into it, they start to nerf a lot of this stuff. Uh, we've been using a lot of Battle Barks here lately as well. So that's always something that you can use in the, in the game as well. And we'll be going over the Battle Bark build here before too long as well. But try to share these things. These are kind of PvE stuff. You can use them in PvP now. Obviously, PvP, I'm not going to show everything that we use because, hey, let's face it, we might fight you in battle one day. Uh, but what I will do is I'll show you some good all-around builds that's going to help you survive. Let's see if we recognize any of these guys. Nope. And nope. Let's see what we got here. I guess we could have went ahead and... Uh, Picked up a couple contracts and got us some materials for our helm. Now one of the things that's kind of getting used to, it's been a while since I've been playing, haven't been in the hospital for what seemed like an eternity, is getting that aim back. So once you get your aim down with this stuff, it just becomes a fantastic, fantastic ship. That was a campaign -y ship. But if you remember going against those things in these small ships in the past, it was not an easy feat. But it goes pretty quick, pretty pretty smooth. Doesn't take real long to knock these dudes out. Uh, one of the things I do love about this ship is if you're picking up those eights or you decide, you know what, sometimes we'll set up where we have battle scenarios and stuff. Say, hey, we're going to have a battle and we're going over to say Africa or something like that up inside of tributaries that river rat part really comes in handy uh, you get a lot of guys coming up under those medium ships a lot of brigantines and just come up in there to slaughter them out which is always fun I have come across ships uh, that are running wagers helm wagers picking up stuff you see a helm wager pop come up in there with this especially if they're in those little tunnels and stuff little little uh, tributaries and you can just dominate them with this ship because you'll be surprised how many people are not actually leveling up their ships right now. They've just not bothered with it. So, hope that's been fun for you to watch, guys. I'm going to hop off here. We will talk to you later.